make sure everything is up and running. Today we're just going to do some code for fun since I have a massive headache and I don't think I should be doing serious work in this state. All right. Are we live on YouTube? Are we live on Twitch? Okay, I think we're live here. And Twitch shouldn't be far behind. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to look into a little bit of a collision and uh, particularly redirecting bouncing objects. So last time we made these bouncy sprites here. They're very primitive, just basic canvas stuff, you know. We'll go to a more advanced uh, shader-based version, something like this later on, or even something like my little sprite galaxy demo here, which has, uh, I think it has a million sprites being rendered here. Um, now, this was a perfect collision between um, points and lines that I worked on a while ago. And the idea being that no matter how fast something moves, if I bounce it often enough it, within one frame, I will never pass through other objects. That was kind of the idea. Now, for what I imagine for very large numbers of objects, I don't know if this is feasible, but it could be, you know, like a... You know, after you do the bounding box collision, you kind of do a more detailed collision or even just for directional collision. But as you can see, um, the two spheres down here kind of represent where the object is on one frame and where it will be in the next frame. And the orange lines are where we're bouncing off. But instead of kind of calculating a sphere to line collision, we're actually expanding the lines, the static objects, into these pill shapes. So then we can pre-calculate basically their sort of pill shape boundary so we can even have accurate collisions on the corners. So imagine that blue ball bounces off this corner. You can see where that outline red sphere hits the actual corner point of the orange line where the blue line would have been without the collision and the green is where the line will end up after the collision. And this should be fairly accurate. It's not optimized, I've spent way too much time fiddling with this let me think oh yeah the um when i click it generates a random bouncing object to see kind of I was testing what it looks like with multiple um bounces don't know if i can actually drag these uh, apparently not all right uh, one second i think youtube is telling me i'm live yes thank you very much so I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to first do some very primitive basic collision detection. So it's just like, hey, are these things colliding? And maybe we'll clean up some of the basic framework here a little bit. Um, then can we just, in a very sort of naive way, just bounce things off each other as, you know, sphere on sphere collision, you know, just redirecting them. Kind of imagine what happens when the sphere collides with the, the point. That's kind of the calculation we'd want. And maybe I can lift the maths out of this project as well. And then finally, or maybe initially, I'm going to have a quick look at physics libraries. So um, I think, I mean, there's a couple I've looked at in the past, like there's Pox2D, there's a couple of JavaScript ones. But I'm interested in Phaser IO's physics um, engine, because obviously this is, you know, uh, used in games and it should be fairly. So there's these three different physics. So arcade physics, collision overlap movement related methods, arcade physics body contains velocity, acceleration, dragon related properties, arcade physics powered weapon plugin is bullet pool management, ninja physics, not normal physics by default. So and P2 collision overlap movement related physics. So I'd like to do a have a quick look at some sort of basic comparison on these. And I believe if there's one for oh, okay, these are examples. So if we do Arcade vs. Uh, Ninja vs. P2. Maybe somebody's done some comparison for us already. Arcade vs. High Speed AB collision only. So that just tells us there's a collision. Okay, so we probably want the arcade physics. Um, so if we do arcade physics performance because i'm looking for something that can handle very large number of objects and i'm probably going to implement something myself but um 
Oh, we have a problem with a YouTube chat connection from Restream. Did our chat not go through on, re on YouTube? Let me try this again. Do YouTube chat. All right, I think now we're connected. Uh, that was odd. All right. Um, better than. Um, let's see. Arcade physics. There should be something. Because I, I don't, I'm not using phaser, right? So I'm wondering if there's a Git repo. So I can actually look at how it works. Okay, there's three public repository machines. Topic, phaser, arcade, physics, plugin, debug, physics. So maybe there isn't. Hmm. All right. Um, let's just get started then with just some basic collision on this project. Let's get our, our log over to the side. And let's... We probably want to be able to slow down our rendering as well. So when we're debugging, we're not getting hit by... You know, if we're, if we're logging something out while rendering, we don't want to get hit with 60 logs per second. Um... First of all, when I'm scrolling here, everything slows down like crazy. Huh. All right. So, step one, I'm going to change it to um, auto and preview off. Yeah. Secondly, we're going to change the renderer. And we're going to collapse all of this here for now. So this is what we did last time, which is now what, two weeks ago. So we have our renderer. And our renderer. Start, stop, handle, render. All right, so if I stop this here. Post, what's broken here undefined fire base what um you know what let's refresh this tab actually let's see if there's because i have a whole bunch of these code pens open and some of them might be doing something that i don't want it to do uh, gpu cpu time gpu the uh, GPU memory. There's no GPU time, which is a bit unfortunate. Ah, GPU process. So if I'm going to kill... Ooh, I killed the GPU process. I think I'm worried. I, I'm realizing now that might screw with my stream. Are we good? Yes, I think we're good. All right. So I'm going to refresh this tab. And hopefully, I'm still seeing a bunch of errors. Um, I don't really want to see those. Those are code pen errors, and I don't know why code pen suddenly is getting all these errors. Okay, so the render is not hit, not getting executed now. Let's see where this gets used. Start handle render. Okay. So the idea now is that instead of handle render start. Instead of rendering, uh, running it here. I'm just thinking last time I realized because I want to initialize our time. Basically, here we're waiting for the next frame, which is the first time we get a time stamp. And then we're basically not rendering on that frame and waiting until the next time frame. So we have our first delta time. But what if I have two separate render functions? One for the first frame. 
and then that calls the second one. Then we don't have that if statement and we don't have that repeated call here. Although this we'd still have. Um, let me think. So we can do a handle first render. Basically. Right. And then on the first render. We'll just do this. Right. We don't execute on render at all. We'll we'll do less last frame time is time. Or do we want to this time last frame time? Why am we? Ah, I think last frame time is not relevant here. Oh, because that's happening after the render. Okay. So then the idea would be is we're doing handle first render here. And then we'll do handle render here. And then here we should always have our delta times already set up. So we should never have to do this check. Because last frame time should already be set up. In fact, we don't set up time here. Last frame time. Why are we doing this? Uh, I guess what we really want to do is this. Last frame time is this. Time. Times la uh, minus last frame time. Or we just okay internally let's let's internally just record it as milliseconds. I'm trying to think what's what's what makes more sense. Internally work with milliseconds or internally work with seconds. Let's okay, I'm gonna work with seconds. So we're gonna do um time is times equals that. DT is that. Um and then we're just assigning it over here. And then that should just kind of loop around. And that's it. And then here, we're running handle first frame. And then we don't have that if statement here anymore, which happens, well, I mean, one if statement every six seconds. Uh, if the, every frame is probably not the worst thing in the world, but it's just a little cleaner. Handle first render is right there. So that should do the trick. And I pressed a five, which I have to remember not to do. And render is not defined. Uh, yeah. Um, we didn't have, oh, ah, I see. Uh, CTX on render. Okay. There we go. That should do the trick. Here we go. Now we're also running some background sprites and I think I'm just setting them up as basically non-moving sprites. So let's see where that's happening. And we'll render frame. I think I just threw it together fairly uh, basic here. I think this is the the static background sprites. So I think I can just comment these out for now. And we don't want to have a thousand sprites. Let's do 10 for now. And then we're going to be able to control the frame rate. Now we have two ways of controlling the frame rate. We basically can decide when to render the next frame. Or we can just manipulate, um, instead of using request animation, 
uh, frame to use set timeout. And I think for debugging, set timeout is better because we can like step through it. We can do it one step at a time. We can control the speed very easily and all that sort of thing, right? Um, and I'm trying to think, since I'm calling it three times already, is there a... Does it make sense to wrap it into a function? Probably. So we can have a function, something like uh, wait for next frame. Uh, render func. Something like that. And then for now, it'll be just this. So it's basically just a wrapper, right? So then here we can just do this dot wait for next frame that. Ooh, I hate when just the double cursor. Don't do it. Don't do it. Alright. Sorry, if I'm breathing into the mic. I'm trying out a new setup because I've noticed my audio isn't that so great. So maybe if I keep the mic closer to my mouth, it'll be better. But right now, I'm not super happy with the sound. Okay. So now, instead of doing this, we should be able to do a set timeout, right? So we can do a... Oh, and ref RFID, are we using this? Cancel image frame. So, um, wait for next frame. And we'd have to change that down here as well. Okay, so we can do basically this. Set timeout. And we'll just do um, this dot frame delay equals 16, or let's call it um, 50. Right? Instead of that, then down here we'll do. Can we check if something is a. I think we can do both, right? We can just do um, clear. Timeout. So if I do this and now run it. Yeah. And if I do it 200, we should have five frames per second. And the nice thing about this is we can change the speed, maybe put a slider on the screen or whatever. Um, there we go. And then we can debug it and we can log something out every frame. We can even have a pause and play and all this sort of thing, right? Um, in fact, there is a little plugin that I've been using in the past. Let's just find something that uses it. Or some very basic um, UI on the screen, which is great for like just throwing in something for debugging and not having to build my own all the time. Uh, up here. Uh, no. Okay. Um, let's just find one which actually uses it. And uh, where's the last one that used it? I should be able to see it on these screenshots. I used to do it all the time. Or uh, maybe I haven't used it in a while. Um, how far do I have to go? Um, I definitely used it with 3GS stuff. Oh, this is so bright. My eyes hurt. Ouch. That really hurts my eyes. Um, I've been using my own for a while, apparently. Oh, come on. Can't possibly have to go back this far. Yeah. Mm. I definitely used it with the cards. I definitely, I mean, I think I did. Oh, come on. How far back? How far back? I don't see it. It's usually a little menu on the right side. Oh, here we go. So this definitely had it. Um, and I think this was also by Mr. Dupe, the creator of 3JS. And it's something is lagging. Something is messing with my system here. Why is, why is the camera using up so much CPU? Uh, it's not really. Hmm. Don't know what, what's going on here. I do have too many tabs open, though. 
So it could definitely be something like that. All right, let's see. So I think it's this one here. Um, so that GUI, let's see if there's a new version. It's always good to update these kinds of things. I mean, I was using what, 6.0, 0 0.79, here we go. So there should be an updated version now. So if I go here, 6 point, uh, 0 0.79, huh? 0 0.79, um, I should go to releases, 0 0.79. So if I go to this URL, just go 0 0.79. We should be okay. Although I'm not a big fan of Cloudflare. Actually, hmm. How big is it? Ooh, bigger than I, I would like. Is there a minified version? How big is this? 13.2 uh, kilobytes. It's not that big. Um, because Cloudflare is often causing me problems. They don't like Malta, I think. Um, can I just go to code that uh, roll up config. Is there not a minified version? Ah, build it would be under build. Why didn't I see, I see build here? So if I just go to here, right, and I say raw, I should be able to just use this. Um, access git JS directly. I think it is not under git. It's uh, not under GitHub user content. I think it's git raw or something or raw.git or something. Um, Access GitHub a hot link JS. Yeah, I think it's like this. So it's basically that that master yada yada yada. I don't know why, but I have had trouble with these things in the past. So this might be more reliable. So we have our stats file and we'll get this one. Not sure why we're getting this one. Um, and let's, nope, let's, nope, <laughs> let's, oh, really? Come on. Where is it? Let's see the usage. So it's been a while. It's been a while. So what do we want to use it for? Um, oh, yes, we want to manipulate the frame rate. So we'll put it here under start. And we want to add stuff to it. Dot, dot gui nope uh, we need to be in the right sorry this is a bit small i am all sorts of discombobulated here needs to make this a bit bigger we need to find our right frame here we go maybe it's capital dat nope that gui that dot gui. This is ah IP of a community. This is for um, module JS type inclusion. Uh, well, we had our own. Nope. This is oh, this is the thumbnail. Uh oh, what happened here? I'm just going to trust that I saved it. If not, I can recreate it. All right. Um, 
Where is the, the thing that we found that was using that GUI? Find GUI. That GUI. So um, I'm afraid in the new version, they might have changed how it gets loaded. So this was the old version. Oh man, this is so annoying when they do stuff like that. This should load um, that GUI in. Sick. Why is it redirecting? Mm. Oh, it's redirecting. So why am I going there in the first place? Run. And that is not defined. Okay. Let's take the min out and see what is actually defined. Hey, Miss Alakitty. <laughs> okay. Um, that was this one, the three in the corner, the proper one-time thing. Uh, it wasn't exactly a one-time thing, but I basically locked it to that particular puzzle because I wasn't fully ready yet to just release it. And we also didn't want um, people to get wind of it before Simon saw it. So now I just basically have to do a little bit of work of cleaning it up a little and kind of releasing it full on. It's it's basically a more generic system. So the three in the corners kind of just demonstrate the system. Um, but yeah, and obviously it should go into testing on beta first and I kind of short circuit it onto, onto production. So I kind of um, made it figure out which puzzle is being loaded and then limit to that. But probably next week I'm going to sort that out and it should go live. It's just also like not everybody might like it, so I need to be able, people need to be able to configure it. And right now it doesn't have like a nice setting. I mean, there's a setting to disable it, but it's under experimental and all that stuff. So it, it needs to be, I need to do a little bit of fiddling to get it all, all to line up, you know. But no, no, it's not a one-time thing. It's just currently not, um, not live for general consumption. Um, it looks like this might not be under DAT. It looks like this might be under GUI. Or GUI? No. Exports, define. Exports. Function Global Factory. Option Global. So there should be a global. Global. Um, am I in the right window here? It should be code pen. Yeah. Global dot D that. Maybe it's on a window, window dot that. Wait. Ports object, yada, yada, yada. Use strict function global. Global dot that equals global factory this. Now in this context, this should be the window. It should be. Window dot dat. No. The second thing that's getting passed in is the factory. Then it executes factory with this passed in exports. And then exports exports dot. So globals which is this should do this thing here. Um, did we, yeah, it's not, we're not loading the min version right now. So what's going here? Yeah, the camera isn't actually using that much space as uh, that's much CPU. I don't know why dragging this is sluggish. It's probably the one of these other windows here. Let's close a few. I can I can I can always reopen them. Especially some of these WebGL ones. Um probably not that one. Uh maybe not that one. Let's 
Sprite Galaxy could be a culprit. Some of these are actually quite intensive as well. I'm just going to close most of these. Object Physics Quad Tree. This one, I don't actually know how intense that is, nor do I know about this one. All right. Um, what's going on? Is it maybe a um, request has no data available? That doesn't seem right. Um, it looks like it doesn't like this. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. It's something about, all right, CDN that GUI. Maybe we can find something that is not um, Cloudflare. <laughs> JS deliver CDN JS, maybe. Although I wouldn't be surprised if under the bonnet, they all use Cloudflare after all, which is a bit sucky. All right, let's just grab this one. Let's refresh this and hopefully it'll load this stuff in. There we go. Finally. All right. Oh, why is this so slow? This is really just peaking my CPU here. All right. We have the controls here. Now we have to remember how to uh, handle those. And I think we still have that code pen open. Yeah. So, auto place false dot GUI. Let's see how I did it. And this settings name, prop min max. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need this as a reference. So, I'm just going to stick this over here. Stick this over on the left for now. And I'm sure I can just add something there with a, a handler that fires when we modify it, right? That's how these things work. So we should be able to do something like um, dot add this dot setting settings name. That settings equals do 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 at settings test. So I'm guessing it's just manipulating that. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So we're just gonna output that. We're just gonna figure this out by guessing. Prop. And then we have a change handler. So we'll do a um, prop on change. Change equals. Nope, that's a function call. No, wait, prop on change. Yeah, okay, no, should work like that. Um, arcs. Jeez on change arcs or just arcs as an area like that that should be fine okay and run yeah um the thing is my cpu isn't actually peaking like Nothing more than the usual. Let's see if I, while I'm resizing the window, does it spike up? Uh, it goes up a little bit, but why? What if I move this? Maybe my uh, graphics driver update or something did something silly. I mean, it could be my on resize handler. Um... Because it doesn't do any 
what's the word? Ah, uh, let's see. My handle resize. Because it doesn't do any... Um, what's the word? <laughs> it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't do any throttling, right? So what if I just return from here? And if I run this, can I refresh this more frequently? Is that better? Um, yeah, YouTube is complaining. The problem is that's usually a problem with Restream rather than what I'm sending. But you're saying Twitch is complaining as well, huh? That's unstable. Yeah, like I said, that's usually Restream. Um, and viewers chat right now. I want to stream. I wish there was like a graph for stream health. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I don't usually have this problem. I mean, the computer is like eight years old, so if I have the problem, it wouldn't be entirely unsurprising. Um, has no property test at blah. Okay, so it wants me to put the tr property into the settings object first. Which is a little silly. Just put it in yourself. Okay. Ah, wait. Test is not defined. Um, how exactly did I do this here? Settings name. Settings. Get item settings. Oh, because there's uh, save and load and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I should really do all of this as well, shouldn't I? Unfinished change. Yeah, Um. let's just bring this over. If this has worked in the past, maybe it'll still work today. Um... We'll probably have to put it somewhere better eventually. Nope. Hate double cursor. This is basically never what I wanted to do. So, um, da -da -da, new dot gun out of place. I should be able to just instantiate that now. Create debug UI, new debug UI, view range, GUI, create debug UI. All right. Um, settings GUI. Okay. Send aside survivors. And slowly infrastructure grows. If I run this, is that just going to work? I wish I could bring this underneath this. I don't need... I want the, the editor area large, but I don't need the screen area as a vertical stripe. I'd like to have the console down here. And I can... I think I can have the console... Yeah, I can have this console here. But... Okay. So we have this over here. And I think there's positioning to be done. Um, so in the debug UI, I am positioning it there. I create my own container and then I think I have some styling for it that I can just copy. It's fine. That should bring it over to the right, at least. I think. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. It's just going to complain there. Um, server is not defined. Server. Oh, yeah. Probably this stuff here. So, we don't actually want to create these settings. We want to create... Um, What did we say? Mouse speed, I believe. Is it still stuttering? Restream says it's excellent. I might have to kill the stream and, and restart it without Restream. Oh, it's really bad, isn't it? 
It is really bad. Um, and I should really have plenty of bandwidth. I mean... Uh, restream? Why do you do me so? The problem is, in the time it takes me to reset it, it I generally don't manage to connect to the stream again. Um, and the annoying thing is I can't even change the setting while I'm streaming. Like, it doesn't let me change the settings, which is so silly. The settings screen is just blanked out. Um, I'm gonna try it because this is just awful. Sorry about that. Um, I'll reconnect to YouTube and if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna have to update the link in the Discord chat. Um, of the updated stream. I'll paste it in the Twitch chat once, if it changes, otherwise, well, even if it doesn't change because Twitch people won't have the YouTube link. So, because otherwise the stream is just not very nice, I think. Frame rate 10 FPS, why? Why is the frame rate 10 FPS? What the hell is going on? Um, let me see. OBS says... Like, I only have three three uh, megabits per second, 3,000 kilobits per second. It's not a lot. Dropped frames, 17% dropped frames. This is crazy. Um, one sec. Is there something I can close? I can close these. I don't think they should be causing that much problems. But they could, I suppose. Um, I can close these. Sometimes I go a little overboard with the tabs. I I understand. Uh, I have a second copy of that open. That's probably not helpful. What's that doing there? Um, I should just kill some things as well. Yeah, Zensets Virus sometimes spikes up to 74% of CP usage. Why? I'm just going to kill the process and restart it. And maybe also kill anything with high memory footprint. The GPU process, we already restarted. Uh, restream, I don't want... I'm scared to touch. I'm going to end this process as well. Just want to close that window. Uh, there's a spreadsheet with 300 megabytes of memory usage. Alright, maybe it's better now. Thing is, OBS isn't even telling me anything. It says 4% CPU usage, which is nothing. And now my backup tool is kicking in. Yeah, that's always not helpful. Uh, OBS. Only the things that should read, uh, that should be running. And the camera is always it's sitting there around 12%, but it shouldn't be causing any of these issues. Okay, I think I managed to reconnect to the stream. My god, I don't know. And it doesn't... The, the, the process of it all is so ridiculous. I can't prepare it all and then just press the button to connect to a different thing. I have to first disconnect, and then I could still not change any settings. I literally had to restart OBS before the settings screens grayed out. So I'm also wondering if OBS itself was just messed up in, internally somehow. Um, I mean, the CPU has changed, but it should be fine. That's just how it always is, which is, you know, ridiculous in itself. Um, let me get the stream URL and post in Twitch. Sorry about that. Restream really, yeah, now it says excellent connection. It's, it's there's something with Restream. I try, 
but it's uh, it doesn't let me sometimes. All right, let's get that out of the way. Let's try to get back to where we were before. I probably should restart that because I killed a whole bunch of things. And unexpected token, four, six, eight. We probably want to recollapse all. Oh, that's a bad sign. Can I? It just doesn't do anything when I press fold all. Um. Hold all. Yeah. Okay. All right. So start create um so we probably want that gooey stuff in the create thing here all right so that gets us or it should get us a new blank gui shouldn't have any of the stuff in here now Okay, I'm gonna use this a little bit. Don't know exactly how this thing down here works. Okay, we have the controls. So let's um, let's just put this in here. Frame delay. Val, we'll do it. Or let's let's just call it FPS, right? Target FPS. Value, let's call it 10. Minimum um, 0 0.1. No, minimum 1 FPS. And maximum 60. And I screwed something up here. Handler name on mouse speed change. Now the handler name works how exactly? Handler name. Uh, it must... It must, <laughs> it must associate that name with something somewhere. Uh, I can, I can probably open Discord again. All right, I think we should still be connected to the same um, URL, stream URL. If you can see the screen, please drop a message. I would appreciate that. All right. So, unfold. Can I? No, no, it's not unfolding. Now it unfolded. Do I need it to click a million times? I don't know. All right. Wow, what the heck is going on today? Um, and why is my OBS showing a pause symbol? It's showing a yellow pause symbol over the OBS icon. What does that mean? Maybe because I'm recording? I've never seen that before. Great, that's all I need now. It's weird stuff showing up that I've never seen before, that it's never explained, never referenced anywhere. Yeah, pause marker, why? I didn't pause the recording, did I? Maybe I did. I don't know. It doesn't say. It's just some things are buttons are gray or black, and I don't know which one means on and which one means off. Great user interface design that. All right. Jeez. Handler name. Here we go. So handler name. Change handler. Handler name. And I have to click five times before it unfolds. What is going on? I'm going to refresh the page again. This is ridiculous. Why? Okay. So now clicking it once seems to do the trick. Uh, this is also not folding all. This is not how folding all used to work. All right, at least now I seem to be able to unfold things by just clicking once. Which you'd think, you know, would be the default behavior. Um, I don't know why the handlers are passed in as strings. Uh, 
doesn't make sense. This dot change handler handler name. Unchange, unfinished change, handler. I guess that I can assign it later. Um, no, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put in the handler here directly, and it either exists or it doesn't. Yeah, and I don't think we need this at all. So then we should be able to just pass in the handler in create. Here we go. Handler. Like that. And that should be all we need. God, this is... Sorry, technical difficulties are always a little... Yeesh, compopulating. Um, yeah, it doesn't collapse the stuff down here. So this display is kind of useless, actually. Um, so this, it does not fire this. Because I gave it the wrong argument name. All right. Okay, that'll do. So, um, and we should just be able to do game as an instance, right? Why is this static? Oh, um, we probably don't want that here. We want that in init. Yes, yes, yes. We don't want that here at all. This is the factory function. We want that up here and in it. We have fonts, we have a render, and we're gonna create the settings. And then here we'll do a handle. Um, and what does it pass in? It just passes in the value. Um, I think we can improve on that. So we can do a handle change. Um, I don't know if we're doing bind handlers here. We probably want to add bind handlers. So constructor bind handlers this, and we that's probably the first thing we want to do. Bind handlers this, and then handle change. Um, we want to do a uh, create change handler uh, setting and then we'll return a function return function And that function will accept val. Right. And um, it will call handler with val. And we probably want to have the current value saved, right? Prop add settings name uh, da, 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 da. so we probably have something like this current valves valves like that we'll do this current valves name equals i think uh one second What does prop actually contain? I'm guessing there's some sort of value somewhere. So basically I want to record the current value so then I can pass in 
the current and the next value. So prop has initial value. Does it have current value? Initial value, set value, property, object, target FPS. Now if I change it, uh, copy object, nope, uh, store, nope, nope. Max listen name object. I mean, I guess initial value will do. So we can do um, prop dot initial value. And then here we're going to pass this dot create change handler. Um, actually, we just need the prop. Right. Right, right, right. Handler. And then we probably don't even need to do that here. We can probably do it inside the handler. So we can do something like this. Create change handler. Drop. Handler. And then here. A change handler on change. And then we can check how prop gets changed here. Right. So now as I move the slider like that should get us prop. So we have initial value. We also have object and that seems to be the current value. Now, if I do it again, the question is, the pre previous value isn't organized here. An initial value is still this. And over here... Yeah, all right. So, we'll check prop.object as well. So, prop.initial value. Prop.object. Um... And that should get us a good insight over what's going on here. And I'm spending way too much time on this. I'm realizing I should have just made it work. Sorry if this stream is getting derailed a bit. Started late. I have a headache. Had a long week. Not the best circumstances. All right. Initial value 10, 10, 10. Boom. 10, 10, 37. So... Um, let car val equals, and I guess we can either go to the prop object or to the initial value. Um, I don't think I can initialize it with a different value other than this. So we'll do this, right? And then in here, we'll do car val, right? And then we'll have new value. And we'll have prop, and prop itself should also have the name property. So we'll have prop.property, and we'll have prop.object, which is, I don't know, it's a, the a funky version of it, funky format. And then we'll just say... We have val and we have car val. And I think we can just do this. And then at the end of it all, we'll assign car val to the value. And then hopefully that will track the value over time, excluding when it gets changed elsewhere from the outside, obviously. So, and that's all a little verbose. So we started value, current value, and I divided one by the other, which is not super helpful. Let's do that again. So let's see. Initial value is 10. Property object is that. If I do this, current value, prop property. So target FPS is the property name. It doesn't... 
All right, it uses the full title. Uh, fair play, I suppose. Um, and property object slash property thingamajig here. That should, I imagine, be the the updated value already. Because if that's the prior value, that would be also great. Because then we don't have to do all this mess. And that's why I need to output it directly. Because the console is lazy evaluating, which messes with this stuff. And... Thank you. Holy crap, why does that take so long? So, 10, 10, 10. Now, if I do this... Current value... 10, 35 point yada yada current value property prop object so that's the new value which is the same as val all right and that went through the whole thing twice uh why twice Okay, so it hits multiple times. Uh, we don't want that. So what we're going to do instead is, first of all, here we're going to execute the handler. So we're just going to do a handler um, prop.property. And then we'll get the new val and then car val. And we'll do if val equals car val then we'll do return console dot error same value now we don't need to update we don't want to do like a time thing or whatever doesn't make sense i think okay boom yeah so this seems to tick well, if I move it, it'll do change. It'll it'll do change. It will change. Okay. And then this will be the new value, and the second one will be the prior value. Yes. Okay. Good enough. Rid of all that. I'll just do the return here. We don't need that. We don't need that. Don't remember what all this stuff is for. Don't care. And that's it. So uh, the only thing now we want to do is actually handling that. So handle setting change name val rev. And now We should be able to do that and just put that in here. And that should be able to handle all settings. We can just have one place for the game to do that. God, that takes a long time. Handle setting change. Okay, so then we can round it up and update this on the renderer. So renderer in it and research <laughs> wait for next frame frame delay so frame delay should be the inverse so the inverse uh so if we want 60 fps the inverse is one over 60 is our frame delay right times a thousand to get milliseconds um so let frame delay equals one over val um and we output also the frame delay off the renderer
something like that. Right. That should be it. The fact that nobody's putting any messages in, I'm guessing that Scream also oh, screwed up all sorts of ways. 9.10, no, stream is healthy. Okay, 9.11, stream is health, healthy. It is the last thing YouTube said. But my one viewer disappeared. Sorry to see you go. Restream screwed me. So frame delay, it's all sorts of things here. Target FPS, frame delay, 200. So frame delay needs to be times 1000. Frame delay is this, times 1000. That's milliseconds. And I'm guessing we can round to the nearest millisecond. Actually, it's 1000 divided by val, we can get rid of that, multiply. And frame delay here is in milliseconds, yes. Okay. Render frame delay is 200 currently. It should be 28 to get 36 FPS. To get 4 FPS, it should be 238. And to get 60 FPS, frame delay should be around 17. Yeah, so we kind of want to actually keep fractional frame delays, um, even though um, it's not managing with the set timeout, the accuracy, but because we can probably move from set timeout to actually an FPS, F like an overtime accurate frame delay, um, which we don't need right now. This is literally just supposed to be just for debugging, but we're just going to do that. We're just going to do that. And we'll probably manually execute this once. Um, maybe we should do that here. So, um, so if init is true, enter max init, if init, then, uh, so if handler will do let handler equals yeah we'll re reuse that variable a little dirty and then this if yeah if init we'll also call handler And we need to call it now with with prop dot initial value prop dot initial value yeah or we can default to current value and then we can just call it with nothing cannot use handler for initialization there we go. And it should have uh, executed this thing once. Which, of course, I already removed prematurely. Oh, I'm still messing around with the settings widget. Hey, Chameleon. Hey, Michael. Yeah, yeah, um, because I, I restream, sometimes restream just doesn't work. I don't know why. And then I just have to stream through one or the other directly. Hey, Chameleon, how you doing? All right, uh, this is not doing its thing. And it is true. Um... On change. Well, prop. That should fire now with init being true, if init. Handler. There we go. 
And that should set the renderer already. Now... I did something. I killed the resize algorithm. Um, and that might be a problem because it might not resize anything now, including the initial sizing. So we can't just do that. We need to resize at least once. I need to, if I, if I want to just not have that resize handle running, I need to do that. Okay. So that's 10 FPS. It says 5 FPS. Um, wait for next frame. Well, this is the advantage. Now it's only happening 10 times per second, so we should be able to do that without killing everything. There we go. Frame delay, 200 milliseconds. That is 5 FPS. Um, are we doing this before the render is initialized? Mayhaps. No, the render is created here. Frame delay is, so value here is 10. 1000 divided by 10 is 100. Um, are we not hitting the right thing here? On change, it is not hitting our handle settings change. Handler. Uh, what's going on? Handler. Create change handler. Prop handler. Is this a problem because handler is overwritten in here? Oh, what's going on here? This looks right. We're creating a new handler. We're just reusing the variable name. That's shouldn't be a problem, right? Handler two. Handle settings change. Yeah, it's the same thing. On change happens. Wait. On change happens here. On change handler. Handler 2, if val is different, oh jeez, okay. <laughs> um, so we're not executing this when the value doesn't change, which is a bit silly, which means we can't force it. But that should also imply that it has been executed once before. And it has a not. So what we should do. Basically what I'm thinking is instead of initializing it here with the prior value, we should say, hey, if it is undefined, then we will define it. Um, now the problem here is if we're doing this here. No, so we don't want to do this. We probably don't want to do this. Um, Carval, in this case, though, both will be. Um... <laughs> ah, I want to do things that are mutually contradictory. Basically, I want to enable the null passing here. But what if we don't enable that? What if we do this? So now this will be undefined. It'll get defined here. And we'll just say if car car val equals undefined car val equals initial value. Something like that. I, I basically just don't want to, uh, um, unless 
Ah, oh, this is so annoying. The other thing we could do is we could just say if val is undefined, then execute anyways. The problem is that might interfere um, in the future when something gets passed and that is undefined. Um, or we do it like this. If val is undefined, val is undefined, val. So we could do this initialization after the fact, right? Because now this will be different than that. It'll have an initial value. If the initial value is undefined, we might still have a problem. We'll deal with that when we get to it. Other than that, the only alternative is to set some sort of flag. Or have or add a force argument in the back. So, but now that works. Don't know why. Oh, because it doesn't do that. All right. Slow down. Slow down, buddy. All right, so that works now. So we definitely want to get rid of that frame delay output in the actual frame. Um, but that's nice. So we can just scale it down. We've got one frame per second. Or we can get all the way up to 60 FPS. But then it'll it'll struggle. So that works now. That works. This kind of works. We need to keep an eye on it. Um, there might be some on expected circumstances in the future. Okay. We have a new init argument there. So I think that's all we needed for that. Why did that just widen it like that? We can scale it up or we can scale it down. And I need to refresh that with... Um... Yikes. Yeah, so now if I do this, it shouldn't just go nuts. Uh, I think... Because I'm, I'm wondering if we can, by ramping it upwards, if we can create overlapping set timeouts. So... Um... Basically, let's say if it set, schedules a frame... 10 seconds from now and then I increase the frame rate it reschedules a new frame more re more um no it should still wait till the net yeah changing the frame delay should not do anything else there should only ever be one render func being executed at any time right we have one set timeout here and it's a singular one it's not an interval or anything like that and we're not um are we we're doing three of these handle first render handle render and then handle render again and so this is one timeout waiting for this and now i'm also realizing that of course we're not getting the time value um when we're using set timeout So that'll be render func. And I think it's date dot now. Um, request and re request frame time. Where does the time argument come from? Because I think it's callback performance now. Similar to the one returned. That's similar. It's not the same, though. All right. It's the best we got. Performance.now. Okay. Because I think it's kind of delayed by... Because changing this should not insert additional render frames. So we should be able to scale this up and down quite smoothly. Now, I should technically allow higher than 60 FPS. But yeah, because it would be good for 
uh, performance testing, right? So if I let this go up to 100, it won't actually render faster than that any... Mm. It will execute faster than that, potentially, right? So we should be able to let it go up to, let's say, let's say 120. Yeah. It's a pity it doesn't, it doesn't handle mousing out of the window. And that lets us force it to get to 60 FPS. In fact, it goes higher than 60 FPS. That's interesting. Huh. Oh, because I'm actually telling the FPS renderer when I'm rendering stuff. So even if the screen doesn't refresh. Okay. That's actually, that's, that's quite nice. That'll, do, that'll be good. Okay, so we've done a lot of uh, wasting time to set this up in preparation for debugging collision stuff when we haven't done any collision stuff, right? So we're going to do very primitive collision stuff. Now in the future, I actually want to implement an entity component system here. So all the collision can run on one, um, this one system, rendering is on a different system. So things can just say, hey, I'm a sprite, render me a sprite and all that sort of thing. Now for now, I'm just going to do it very uh, primitively, Primi primitively? primitively inside move things, right? So, um, do you remember to display at 500 hertz? So, yeah, except not in a in a web context, right? It's still, I think, uh, canvas is still limited to 60 fps. I think in mobile phones, for some reason, it can go up to 90 with high refresh. But anyway, not really interesting for me. So, especially not for you know. 8 frames per second animations and low low resolution um, retro graphics and all that sort of thing. So let's just do a very primitive one where we just loop through everything and get all the all the collisions, right? Um, and how are we going to do that? We're just going to do a list of collisions, I guess. So here we're doing already kind of primitive collisions against the outer line. So we can kind of separately... Um, yeah, so this is checking collisions against the walls and then changing the direction. So I think I want to do this completely separately here. Um, so after we've bounced off the walls, for example, right? Um, and here we kind of want to do the double loopy thing. So let uh, J... And then we don't need a second length. J smaller than length. J plus plus. I'm just going to do thing A and thing B. Like that. And we're just going to do um, I, J, thing, A, thing, B. And we'll do if, if I equals J, continue. So we'll, we'll skip the self collisions. And we want to bring this down to a, yeah, we probably want to have this less than one FPS. So if we set this to 0 0.5, will we get two ex um, one execution every two seconds? Ooh, no. E, um, I think I'm underestimating just how many of these will happen there. And that's exactly why we need to be able to run at a very low frame rate. <laughs> Try something. Well, that one actually, since it's rendered as polygons, that will run on very high resolution. Move things. Three. Yeah. So we need fewer things for this test. Um, how many things? How many things? Create things, render things. 
Where are we initializing the things? Uh, mm -mm, render, sprite change fonts, GUI, this. Create things, here we go. Create things, where do we execute create things? This stuff, create things. So let's pass in three things. Oop. Create things, then count. Boom. So that should get us three things. And now if we output one of these for every frame, that should be nine collisions minus the diagonal. So six, something like that. Um, every frame or two. One, zero, one, two, two, zero, two, one. And we're skipping the, we're skipping zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So we're ending up with one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. And outputting the whole thing is going to be a pain in the butt because of um, the spamminess of the console output. Okay. Um, and probably I want to have... Actually, target FPS should just go down to zero, shouldn't it? Ah. Uh, not to zero because that's infinite. And then we're in trouble. Um... So if I crank this up just a little, it'll immediately get painful, right? At least I can bring it down. Um, yeah, we, we probably need to limit this like uh, max 10 just so I don't screw myself. So um, now at running this very, very slowly and we'll probably want to be able to go down even lower on the minimum. We want to run a distance check on each of those. Um, but first we do an AABB check, right? So, so we'll do an AABB check, AABB, access line bounding box, right? And we'll pass in things. right and we'll just do this i'll just do this and our things have i'm guessing x's and y's and widths and heights so if we um we'll so uh da, 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 da. sorry my brain um so a dot x i'm just trying to visualize right so we have the two x's and their widths we want them to be within half of the sum of their widths right so we have two Two fat objects with the x's in here. Now if we shift shift them both over to that, like so their x is in the upper left corner of a box. Um what distance from each other can they be? The width of half of the width of both. Right. So let w equals a dot w plus dot w 0 0.5 times that h is whoops 0 0.5 times the height now i gotta keep an eye on my phone because my girlfriend is at the, at the hospital with her grandmother and i don't know if she's gonna come back at her usual rhythm i might have to take care of the dog all right so if b dot x minus 
a.x. And we don't really care which one is on which side, right? So we'll take the absolute of their distance and we check if it's smaller than the width or this, this width value, right? So math.apps. And if this is smaller or equal to W, then we have a horizontal collision. And if it's for the Y coordinate, we have a vertical and we need both, right? So we'll just return that. with um, missing out some braces. And W and small than height. Where do we have three, six, nine down here? Okay. All right, so false, 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 false. Yeah, so I'm going to have to be able to control one of these. So maybe by saying, hey, if I click one somewhere, also, yeah, per frame, it only adds one of these. Right. Um, basically, we want to have a an extra sprite. Let's say, call it sprite zero where the mouse is, right? So let's add some mouse handlers. Um, mouse move. I don't think I have mouse handlers yet. No. All right, so we'll just say... Handle set exchange. We'll do also handle mouse move. And we'll just say um, this dot and mouse position. I'll just do that. And then. Um, Dom, dom dot add event and list. Sorry, I'm uh, distracted because Simon was asking something about setting up, whoop, setting up a puzzle, and I'm wondering if it's super urgent. Um, like if he needs it for tonight, you know what I mean. But he didn't say anything about that, so I'm guessing not. And must move. Nope, don't refresh the whole browser. So the idea is, uh, as I move the mouse, we'll pick up the uh, location. Unfortunately, there's no other way of doing that. Um, and we'll just setting it to X and Y. So this dot MP dot X equals event dot X event dot Y. Right, and then on the movement situation here, we'll just take things zero, but x equals this dot mp dot x and y. And we'll just set that sprite to the last known position of the mouse. And render and render, okay. Now, obviously, yeah, we should actually, yeah, if we can run the collision check on a different clock than, um, than the renderer, that would be a lot better. And why didn't I think of that? All right, so move things. So instead of that, we'll do um, collide things. 
For now, we don't even care about timing. Just throw that in here. Like that. Uh, we'll do that. And then we'll just do um, set interval this dot handle. Yeah, I need the handle prefix so our binder finds things correctly. And we'll run it every two seconds, let's say. And then we can render it much faster. Something like that. Okay, so that is incorrect. So let's output, let's output a little bit of more information here. So that's our collision result, which is inaccurate. But we should also be able to get the DX and the DY and all that sort of thing. All right, so we can use the DX here, DY here. So DX, DY with height. All right. Delta X smaller than the width and the width being half of the combined width of the two objects. So we got a bunch of numbers and I probably need to round them to make it. Oh, we have NAs on W and height. And I'm guessing I'm using width and height instead of, yeah instead of abbreviations great so let's do that um i probably want to round all of these so if i move this over here yeah so now we'll get symmetric collisions Okay. And that means obviously we don't need to do the reverse collisions, right? So we need to check um, only for, so if we think of the, if we think of it as a square, you know, I's and J's, we only need to do the, the triangle, right? If I is greater or equal to j no if j is greater or equal to i i then continue so that should only check each collision once so one zero two zero two one and then obviously one versus one we don't care that's each one right um and i is so we go i being one two I zero, why does I zero not do any of these? So I zero and then J goes up. If J is greater than I continue. If J is smaller or equal I continue. If we do that, then I at zero should do one and two. And then we should take it from there, right? Zero one, zero two, one, two. And if we do more than three, we might have a slightly better idea of how that looks and that should give us a full set of collisions so for four objects that should get us how many are collisions one two three four five six six collisions one two three four five six yes six collisions and that's why um, you need to optimize how you do these collisions because you can form any collisions very very quickly so we get one true here, and it's one true here, and that gets one true there. And if they get closer to each other, we'll get a bunch more trues. All right. So we'll do um, 
that collisions equals empty array collisions that is that doesn't feel right on s yes i always get that wrong so we'll do and this would be the broad phase basically and then the uh short phase i guess i don't know what the opposite of broad phase is would be to check that the pixels are actually interacting or whatever else closer distance check we want to do so if yada 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 collision dot push and we'll basically just do we want to put the objects in there or the indexes for now we'll just put the indexes in there what did i just do i delete more things than i wanted All right, and then down here, we'll just output the collisions like that. And we probably can just do this here, this here, or we don't need these guys. Um, nope, I don't know why I did that. If I, if J is greater than I, and this, no, because we don't, we, we do actually want to, what, ah, wait, if J is small than I, continue. So for J, we want to start, so if I is zero, we don't want to check zero again, right? So we want to start from one, I plus one, right? So I plus one. And then I should never go to the last one. So I should be smaller than length minus one. Like if there's one object, we don't have any collisions, right? And then from for J, we go up to length. So if length is two, so I goes from zero to zero, it doesn't go further. And it starts from one and goes to one. Length is two, you know. And that's it. And then we never need to continue. And then we can just do that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. All right. So. No collisions. One collision. Different collision, I imagine. Zero, one, one, three. Okay. And then we want to probably do something like that. And we can probably do the collision slightly more frequently. Uh, actually, yeah, let's do the collision every second and let's add more objects. Um, I want to basically have more than one collision at a time and see how that, how that gets handled. Yeah, so you see so there's things all overlapping collisions. So it would probably be good if we can manipulate um, the rendering off of these objects. Um, I'm just starting to think right now is like we could set a flag collision true. Either we set a flag collision true or we basically re-render the frame on the collision uh, thingamajig. You know, so we can get like a red outline, so I can get immediate feedback. I don't have to wait for this. Um, we could also... Where does the rendering happen right now? I, I moved that around a couple of times. It's certainly not happening inside here anymore. We have render things. Render things. Things.length. Draw sprite. Do we have draw image, draw sprite? Um, because, well, it's always two things that collide, right? So what if we do something like um, things i dot... 
collision. That's true. And we'll do the same thing for J. And prior to that, we reset them all. So we'll just run through them. And we'll probably want to pull that out so we don't reassign that over and over and over. Um, uh, doo -doo. So they can move, but the collision doesn't get reset until we've passed through this code. And now we can say um, you know, thing if thing dot collision we basically can do a, a renderer so we'll do ctx dot fill style red ctx dot fill rect um X, Y with height, I think. X, Y with height. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. This is all kind of low level first principles, kind of just algorithms. Boom. Collision, no collision, collision, no collision. Multiple collisions. Cool. Should we add a number for the collision? Maybe. Zero. So we can actually say how many times each thing is collided with. Collision is greater than zero. And then we'll do something like... Um, RGBA, red, and then we'll do, you know, something like that. Collisions times collisions. Collisions times 0.1. That'll be the alpha. So then, you know, 10% opaque red box, which should already be visible. Like that. And if there's more collisions like that. We probably want to do that. Um, also on the color. Yeah, actually, it makes more sense to have the alpha just be alpha always and then um it gets redder as it collides more i suppose so or will it get brighter as it collides more e i should have like a, a color range not a zero not black to red because then it's just the common case would just be black and it's not easy to see so let's make it like that and then let's scale it up in the other color channels. And maybe start by, you know, 20 percent. Oh, wait, and that should be times uh, 255 times that. Since it's mapping to a value, between 0 and 255. Boom, red red more red no nope. on. multiple collisions yeah you see this middle one is brighter than the other two yeah we could we could maybe drop the blue that might be enough and if i add more objects yet again and render or move things actually yeah we don't want to we don't wanna, don't want to log that out. And we want to initialize 
Well, let's collide twice per second, maybe. And create things. Nope. Where are we creating things? Start under create things. Plenty. I gotta be careful so I don't like because it's not optimized, it's not really a proper algorithm, so I gotta be careful of how often I do certain things because it can get too much very quickly. Yeah. And you see it kind of gets like a yellowish orangey as it interacts more frequently. And it also goes to show that we can render at a higher frame rate than we necessarily do collisions. So for example, we can have larger ABB, uh, AABB boxes and basically say, hey, we're only checking every 10 frames. How far can everything move in 10 frames? Let's enlarge our boxes. And we'll just know, hey, you know, do we need to actually check in that uh, region again later on? That's one of the ways of optimizing it, I think. Right. And if we don't output the collision thing, uh, the collision array, we probably can collide. Uh, we can run the collider more frequently. Without it kind of getting sluggish. Let's get the max frame rate up to 60. So then I can just crank it. Oop. Yeah. Now the real problem becomes when we have more objects, right? Because we're colliding everything with everything. So we've got half the square of the number of objects and boom it's like oh no wait we're down to 10 fps yeah and of course rendering here doesn't actually affect our um collision frequency right so that's kind of nice so if i do 100 objects 100 shouldn't be a problem for a modern computer anyways i mean i did a naive collision on my you know dos based system and it was absolutely no problem for several hundred objects yeah i'm, I'm looking at the cpu usage nothing happening Let's crank it back to a thousand. So a thousand, that would be a million, half a million, 500,000 collision checks, which should still not be actually a problem. Yeah, there we go. Now, the one thing we don't have is the bouncing. Hey guys. I'll, I'll wind down soon. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm guessing the bouncing is actually wouldn't be that hard to do now because we know when there's a collision happened. We've recorded it. The one thing we don't have is the collision direction, right? Um, so if I... I mean, we could do something very primitive, right? We could say if thing dot collisions... What the heck? Collisions greater than zero, then we'll just reverse X and Y speed. We'll just have it bounce back in the original direction. Right. Um, and that's independent of the wall bounce. So we'll probably want to do that first. Like that. Something like that. So now, when they collide, they'll bounce. The thing is, they might get stuck together because they might just collide again. Oh, look at that. Bounce, bounce. Okay, that's interesting. That this does not reverse its his direction. Boom. Now, what we could do is we could reset the collisions here. Um, because the next collision update is 500 milliseconds later, right? So we could do the bounce and then say, hey, collision sorted. Don't worry about the rest. And in fact, it doesn't reach rendering here because it happens, the movement happens before the rendering. So we'll get a bounce like up there and we never get the red rectangle rendered. That is interesting. Hmm. Which is not what we want, right?
See, like in this case, it just moved over. Why? Like sometimes it collides and sometimes it doesn't. And it also doesn't collide in the directions that I thought. I thought it would reverse both directions. Right? Yeah, it should. But it sometimes seems to be reversing only one direction. Like in this case, it looked like it only bounced in the X direction. Which is weird. Maybe because I'm not also updating the X S variable here. And then we're actually moving in the other direction. So we'll probably need to do something like this. Um, yeah, anyway, I need to kind of figure out the, the sequencing here as well. Like if I want to render the thing, I cannot have the movement change values that the renderer needs. And my zero object here doesn't seem to be able to affect things like I think it should. Thing that access is that. Let's... I kind of need the wall bouncing though. Probably should do this at the start. But then it would still move by... by um, well, if I do this at the start, I can also set its speed to zero. So we could do something like uh, object.assign things zero and then we'll just do x and y something like that actually let's put that to the front we have x y and then we'll do x s zero and y is zero we just assign speed zero to that object so then we don't have to worry about it moving around it might still get bounce of the wall although once the speed is zero it doesn't actually do anything else <laughs> yeah it did not update the y coordinate accordingly x y yep Oop. Actually appropriate to have the spaceship as the first. Uh, let's make it smoother. So boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Now. It's weird. X, S, Y, S. It should reverse both directions, but it feels like. Yeah, you see, it only reverse on the X direction. But it should also revert on the y direction. That's so strange. Yeah, there's something weird going on. Anyway, this is all not, not really proper calculations. I need to figure out the sequencing and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing we could do is we could just... Any any um, collision that's handled that way will just skip all the other stuff afterwards. Right. Then the next frame, it'll be okay again, sort of thing. Still is moving all up to the upper left corner, which is very strange. Hey, NFS Held, how are you doing? Um, why is it all moving up? And I still don't understand how... Yeah, you see, it does not... It does not seem to collide in the x direct uh, in the y direction. What the heck's going on here? Y speed is negative. Both the y speed and the x speed should be reversed. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm just setting them to negative. I'm not actually reversing them. Oh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So that should be like that. That was uh, that was a different thing I was doing here because I had to control how how the uh, collisions and deflections work. I'm okay. I had a bit of a headache, so today my 
thinking process. My thinking machine is not operating very good. Yeah. Boom. 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 Yeah. Um. So I think now we can actually just keep moving. And the wall collisions are just a weird thing. The problem is right now is that we're initializing in places where collision might happen. So obviously now we have to go into the whole thing of uh, how we're actually dealing with the collisions, um, moving things out of each other and so on. And that's that's probably where we're going to land in that whole physics mess of things getting infinite speed and all that sort of stuff. Look at right border. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of... Doing very, you know, I haven't, I haven't implemented the algorithm, right? <laughs> I, I don't have an algorithm. I'm just bound, I'm, I'm just reversing speed right now. But what I really kind of want to implement ultimately is something like this, right? Where you get perfect, accurate collisions. Um. Now here there are vector collisions, right? Lines. So um, that's not really what we want with those objects. Probably what we want is spheres free collisions. I don't actually know. Can I get the algorithm? Uh, can I get the the thing out of here? Because especially if you have multiple collisions, you basically want to uh, calculate a vector. Uh, it doesn't even make sense, to be honest. Probably what you want to do is you want to kind of cheat. Um, and that's something like vampire survivors. That's basically what they're doing, right? You don't want to perfectly accurately... Uh, you know, you just want to move them apart, right? So, like, what we could do, for example, here is... Let me think. Um, if we slow down the collisions again and get rid of this for a sec. Um, if we slow down the collisions to once per second, reduce the number of objects to... to um, a small number. Because now I'm saying, okay... When we collide, what we can do is we cal can calculate um, a vector between the two. Because there's two things, right? There's the direction in which the collision... Like, imagine you could ignore the movement of the other object, right? And you can collide off of the other object as if it's static without taking its energy into consideration, right? Um, because the thing is you have a couple... You have two vectors, you, you have two movement vectors... And you have offsets, you know. So imagine, imagine, you see where I'm hitting the other object matters, right? And then I should, hmm, let me think. So this, this algorithm here, I think, line, line intersect, closest point on line, distance to line, line, intersect, line circle intersect. I think this is the algorithm that gives us the intersection between a movement vector and another uh, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I actually don't really want to do that either because I, you know, I'm not actually gonna work with bouncing balls. Um, the objects have agency, right? They want to move in a certain direction. So all I want them is to basically not be able to move in that direction as quickly as they'd like. So I want them to slightly push the other object, potentially. Um, you know, basically think of something like vampire survivors. Um, you just have creatures moving and pushing against each other. You know, we don't... I'm not simulating pinballs here. Um, so that's probably something I need to implement first, is like a agency of where the object is trying to get to, and then sliding along the, the impeding object, right? Like... I'm trying to think, like, what if I just stop the object and then the object's agency starts it again, right? So the collision might just stop the object. So imagine if I do this and both objects just stop. So if I do something like this, for both objects in, that are part of a collision, so they just straight up stop. In, on the on the collision check itself and then if the objects want to move they basically have to restart their movement but the collision keeps stopping their movement right so boom i touch it it stops i touch it stops i touch it stops i touch it stops right but imagine the object is actually trying to move somewhere and it'll just start moving again um 
right? So we could say, I don't know, um, we could say thing.xs equals uh, blah, 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 equals math.random minus 0 0.5 times 1. I don't even know how they get initialized. Um, create thing. Yeah. So I'll just give him a new random speed. Actually, yeah. Anyway, I still have to implement that in a, in a proper way. Not really. I don't like... Uh, that's the thing. The, the objects themselves will have agency, right? So I need to give them an AI, basically. Say, okay, here is your, your agency. And then the AI, depending on the object, right? If it's a dumb creature, it might just stop. It might just reverse directions. Um, it you know, it might just keep pushing, right? But I'm basically looking for the behavior of something like Vampire Survivors. So if we do something like Vampire Survivors. So if you do something like this, um, right? And you look at something like, something like this. Uh, let's see when it gets a bit busy. Yeah. So for example, here, nope. Yeah, so for example, these creatures, they move slowly towards the player. But this bat, even if it's faster than the guy in front of it, will never push past the guy, right? Unless, you know, and you see how they can have kind of clump up. So they can kind of overlap. So it's it's kind of an elastic, bouncy type collision, right? Um, but the player can, you know, literally freeze a character in the front and basically create a wall of frozen enemies. That then put, you know, so for example, these guys cannot get past the plants, right? They're just trying to push. They're not sliding along the plant, you know? Um, the plant is not a, a glass sphere, right? <laughs> so they might just get held up and never be able to move, right? So that's the sort of effect I'm looking for um, initially, at least. So I think, I think initially I just need to give them agency, like a direction they want to travel. And I want to be able to bounce them backwards, right? So it's... So they need to also, you know, they need to have um, basically not speed, but acceleration, but not exactly that either, right? But I need to be able to bounce them back and then have them slowly try to move back uh, forward in that direction again. Um, so it's kind of like, hey, I need to be able to change their speed temporarily for a few frames to bounce them back um, and then bring their speed back up to, to scratch, right? So... Um, if I I'm trying to think, instead of doing this, what if I literally just move them instantaneously back for a moment, right? So if I say, um, we'll just take their X position and we'll subtract their X speed, but maybe, you know, 10 times their X speed, something like that, and do that for both... Um, dimensions like right right now i'm literally just looking for a sort of quick and dirty simulation of the effect i'm not actually building it like that you know just like a very quick and dirty prototype just to get a feel for things and you know i i, I you know most of this code i wrote 20 plus years ago so 25 years ago actually holy crap so if i do this they are moving in a weird fashion Minus equals 10 times. Yeah. So you see, it bounces back, but it keeps moving. And it probably doesn't bounce far enough back. We probably want to bounce it back by the combined width and height and all that stuff. Uh, da -da -da -da. You check ABBB, yada, yada, yada. We probably, if we have a collision... Yeah. Mm. I do this. And I bounce it back by um things we don't actually know well hmm. Yeah. 
We could do two things just for the effect. So we bounce them back by 10 times. And if it happens more frequently, it'll probably be a lot more natural. And then just reinitialize their direction as well. But again, this is a primitive system because right now the the characters don't have an impet impetus of movement, right? They don't have an AI, so they're just moving in the same direction over and over and over. And this will, obviously, that's the correct behavior in that case. What do, you, what do you call a real game engine? Where do you think game engines come from? People write them. <laughs> That's basically all I've done in my life. <laughs> and every time you use a game engine, you realize soon enough why they built the game engine. Because they're, the game engines they tried to do use didn't do the thing they wanted them, it to do. <laughs> Um, it seems to... It's, it should bounce it back, but... The new random speed also seems to be putting it in a new random location, which is strange. Yeah, that's definitely too far. It should definitely be a uh, fraction off the distance. Anyway, not what I'm looking to do today anyways. But if I go back to half of the bounce distance and then create more things... Let's see. Yeah, I mean, there definitely needs to be a separation between how the object is forced to move versus how the object wants to move. And that's why it needs a, it needs an agency, right? Because we need to be able to give it a negative acceleration, a negative velocity and have the object still try to move forward again. Um, also, I did I did something else in that regard. Um. Let me see. <clears throat> Is it in a collection? Uh, uh, uh. Should be. Oh no, I didn't put this on Code Pen, did I? Oh, there's some. There's some beautiful code I should bring into Code Pen actually, because it's otherwise it's gonna just disappear over time. There was. Not retroside. No, let's see. One sec. I need to get through this more quickly. I need to organize some of this stuff better. Um, but basically, it was an algorithm for operating a kind of virtual robot. Basically, an object with a direction and an acceleration. Like, like something that has a movement direction and a ro rotational, you know, not just X and Y speeds, but actually a heading and a a speed at which it can rotate, maximum speed, maximum acceleration for rotation, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm just wondering how far back that would be. Uh, do, 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 do. My god, my code pen is such a mess. Other people have such beautiful co code pens. Yeah, in fact, I used P2, and there was that Google implementation of Liquid, um, of a physics engine, like in ASMJS, which I could also use. I've at least looked into that a long time ago. Long time ago, how long? Yeah, just six years ago. Uh, accelerated motion, is it this one? Ah, uh, no, that's just, yeah, it's just basic animation stuff. This is definitely afterwards. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, I've looked into gift shop before. Right. That was a long time ago. Um, mouse handler. No. 
Where is it? Because after that, I did a whole bunch of prototyping on my local system. And I don't remember if it was before or after the cards. Because there's a lot of card stuff here. But this was um, this was some work I did for, for a game studio on an RTS. And then I translated a lot of the code to Unity. But I'm trying to f remember if where the pro prototype for that lies. My god, is that some Pascal code I translated? I think it might be, if it's still running. Nope. No longer working. Um... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Ah, uh, man, a lot of fun stuff in here, but bidirectional hit detection. Not quite sure what that was. Oh, that's just some code that I was working with. Bidirectional hit detection. Test A, B, C, direction. I don't remember. Oop. Some of these, oh, ah, yes, animated mouse cursor. <laughs> native, oh, native. How did I switch that? Because the native cursor, yeah, you see, the native cursor actually goes outside the designated drawing area. What switch is that? I forgot. Mouse. Oh, it switched back. I don't know what switch is it. Is it on a timer? Click to focus. Oh, when it's not focused, it's doing the canvas cursor, right? Because it can do the native cursor only when it's focused. Yeah, that that's a sneaky way of rendering outside of the designated area. Here, I think I was just... Oh, it's literally just a copy of GIF shot. All right. Uh, yeah, that isn't it. That's not it. This is Sparks. She's up. Wow. All right. It's nowhere in here. Man, I'm so sure there's a pen of this. Would it be in the retro side? No. Is that infinite? No. We have X, maybe? Uh, this is turning into another session of browsing code pen. Animation. Which one is the private? Hmm. Ah, oh, it's the animated cursor. That's uh, all right. And I think this is just web stuff. I'm gonna see. Oh, there's Sprite Galaxy is in here. All right. Weird. Hmm. All right. Anyway, um, I'm okay with this today. I was on my on my best in the stream screen around. Didn't really help. But I'm going to call it here today. This was just, you know, just having some fun. So in the meantime, um, next weekend, I should be back to um, working on some Sudoku pad stuff. Thanks for hanging out. This has been Sven, where we're coding for fun for the second time. Take care. I hope I'll see you guys in the next time. Next one. Ciao, ciao.